Hello, my name is Sally Kaseli. In this video, I'll provide a brief overview of the components and best practices for multi-location instruction. This means that you have an audience of students in front of you and other students attending the same class session remotely via Zoom. So let's get started. These steps are designed so that you can share your projector screen to the audience in front of you and the remote audience. And then on the laptop screen, you'll be able to see the remote audience video feeds. First, you'll schedule one recurring Zoom meeting in each one of your courses. This is just a one-time step. Second, you'll be using the extended desktop functionality where you'll basically be moving applications from one screen to the other. And thirdly, you'll need to enable the dual monitor option in Zoom, and this is a one-time thing. Then finally, in each one of the meetings, you'll assign a co-host in your class as a moderator and then share the projector screen. The extended desktop is a feature in Windows and also Macs have a similar feature as well where you're adding a second monitor or a second display and you're extending your laptop screen or the primary computer screen to another screen. So you basically are able now to move the mouse from one screen to the other just like as if it were one large screen. The extended desktop allows you to move an application from one screen to the other, or even to have the same application across both screens if you prefer. Now to enable the extended desktop functionality, you'll need to press the Windows key and the letter P on the keyboard, and that'll bring up this menu on the right hand side. By default, it's on duplicate, so it's just mirroring the screen. And we want to choose here Extend. Extend, it's going to make the projector screen an extension of the laptop screen. Now at this point, and unfortunately I cannot capture this in the recording, you can actually move the mouse from left to right or right to left to get to the projector screen. So you test it with the mouse, the second screen, the projector screen, is going to be blank. Now to move, let's say, the PowerPoint to the secondary screen or any of the applications, all you have to do is you click on the top bar of your application and then just drag it to the right. As you're dragging it to the right, it's going to show up, start showing up on the projector screen. In some cases, you might have to drag it to the left. So if it does not work from one direction, try the other direction and that should do it. And you can do more than one application this way to move it to the projector screen. And the next thing that you want to do in PowerPoint is disable the presenter view functionality in PowerPoint. You uncheck the presenter view here and then present the PowerPoint on the second monitor. So again, that was from the home screen. You go to a slideshow and then you choose presenter view unchecked in a second monitor. This has to be done only once on your account in the classroom computer. And here are the quick steps. So on the desktop, you have the Zoom application, or you can type down here Zoom and launch the Zoom application. Once Zoom opens up, click on Sign In. And instead of signing in with your email here on the left, you'll need to click on Sign In with Single Sign-On. Say yes to that, and then open Zoom meetings. Now that you're logged in, you should be able to see the meetings that you have scheduled. You can start a new meeting, you can join meetings, you can schedule meetings and all that stuff. But before we do anything else, we need to click on this little gear icon, click on settings, and then choose this option, use dual monitors. This needs to be done only once and then close that window. This setting will enable you to see the remote audience on your laptop screen and the PowerPoint will be projected to both your live audience in the classroom and the remote audience at the same time. Now to start the meeting, go here under Meetings and if you name this appropriately, it should show up in here. So we locate the meeting, you click on Start now that the meeting has started, you need to go to Participants and then locate your moderator for this class. So you'll need to select their name 
you go under more and then you choose co-host in this way they can monitor the chat options the conversation along the way mute your participants and ask questions on behalf of the remote audience uh, facilitate the discussion so they are moderating and assisting you with the remote audience now that we have the moderator set we need to click here on share screen and then we will choose to share the second screen, which would be your, your projector, the one that has the PowerPoint. So we click screen two. You'll notice that they have numbers as well. So if you look at your projector, there will be a number two on it. Make sure you also choose to share the computer sound and also optimize the screen sharing for video clips. Then click on share. At this point, you'll be able to see the remote audience on my laptop screen here and this is where you'll see all the remote users along with yours as well and then if you notice from the camera angle the projector screen it's displaying the PowerPoint so now that we have shared the correct screen and the PowerPoint notice that the remote audience will be able to see the PowerPoint and also the students in front of you will be able to see the PowerPoint, but you as the instructor will be able to see the video feeds from the remote audience. The controls will show up on the second screen, however, or on the projector screen. However, you can drag those controls and bring them to the laptop screen by simply holding the mouse on it and then dragging them over. From here, you can choose to record the meetings, and I suggest that you record the meetings automatically to the cloud, as simple as that. You have additional controls here as well, such as opening the chat window, so you can have the chat window and see the chats that are going on back and forth between the moderator and the remote audience. And those chats will not show up for the students in front of you. They'll not see this option. That's how the uh, sharing will work. It's a few steps. However, if you look at the key components of it and you practice through them, it should be fairly easy to accomplish and successfully do this. Before I finish this video, a couple of troubleshooting tips. Let's say the problem is that the presenter view appears on your laptop screen. The solution in that case is going to be to go in PowerPoint in the slideshow tab and then uncheck the option for use presenter view. You might also have to change the monitors where it's being projected. If you prefer to teach with a mobile device and you're courageous enough to do so, you can utilize a mobile device as well. Basically, you're going to follow the same procedure that you're doing here to start the meeting and share the screen. And however, you're going to connect with your mobile device to the same meeting and then you're going to make your mobile device a co-host to the meeting. Then you're going to share the screen from your mobile device and that will be projected to the remote audience and also to the students in front of you. Finally, before we finish this video, a couple of tips. One of them is plan ahead. Secondly, assign and use the moderators. It's going to be very tough for you to teach in front of a live audience and at the same time manage the remote audience and all the intricacies there. Also, it's important to set clear guidelines and expectations for the remote audience and also the in-class audience the first time that you meet with the students. And finally, it is important to become familiar with the technology. Once you know what you need to do and what order to do them, it should take about two to three minutes to do the initial setup for your class. So the key here is to practice and practice again, and maybe with other faculty or family members before the classes start.